What's up guys, Godspeed here, back for a tutorial video. In this video I will show you how to build a medieval style port town. I'm at these coordinates here today on Vallegro, and I'm at this body of water here. If you're not using the same coordinates that I'm using, it's important to use a body of water that is as deep as half a dino gate. And you'll see why in a second. I'm going to start by laying out a four by uh, six layout. I mean creative mode, that's why the uh, little primes aren't doing shit to me. Then on this 4x6 layout, I'm going to add a 4x8 layout. This is the fourth build in my uh, new medieval playlist. I've got a couple more to upload. And I've also got a couple more after that to upload. But in between those, I'm going to be uploading some Christmas builds and some other things that I'm working on. So if you don't want to miss that, please ding that notification bell. And also, if you're not a subscriber, please consider being one. And of course, smashing that like button below. So there you go, guys. I have a 4x6 layout. And attached to that, I have a 4x8 layout. Place two wooden fence foundations by leaving a gap in between each one at the front here. And on that, snap four metal window frames across and also four metal window frames high. This is going to be our storm gate. Snap a stone down a gate to both of these. That's why I said find a body of water that's half as, half as deep as a dino gate. And also please uh, repeat this on the rear side. Yeah, because we want the water to look like it's flowing through these storm gates. So as I said, if you don't choose this location, choose a location with the dino gates that are half submerged. Next, take your large stone walls and place them around the perimeter. a bit of lag there yeah I've been hit with some inspiration lately guys I've got lots and lots of cool things coming up that I'm really excited to share with you also I'm gonna be heading up our uh, company twitch as a lot of you know that I have been on the Woodlands Arc which is the longest running PVE cluster I'll link that in the description below and I'll be heading up the main company twitch uh, lots of fun and uh, you know live stream builds with me and plays with me so I'll leave that in the description too hope to see you all there take your stone ceilings and let's see this whole thing across Okay, now we have a we have a raised platform. Let's make some access to the land. So take your ceilings, and of course, anyone who's anyone who plays Ark knows that every two ceilings you have to pillar to the ground. So take your stone pillar, place it at the highest snap point of the ceiling, then underneath, place it at the lowest snap point, and bring it to the floor. It's important to bring the pillar to the lowest snap point under the ceiling because if you don't, you're left with that ugly ass nipple on top, which looks really unprofessional. Obviously, depending on the area that you've chosen for this build, your pier might be longer or shorter or deeper.
or you may not you even use or wish to use it here at all that's fine so I'm gonna go ahead and bring this towards the land and then simply remove the pillar tops. So I think I'm gonna make my pier a bit wider. I'm gonna add a row of ceilings either side towards the land. Yeah, I'm really excited to share these next videos with you guys. Take your wooden fence foundation and snap one either side here at the beginning of your pier and then snap your wooden fence supports. Now I've said this on many of my medieval videos that these wooden fence supports are really kind of buggy and tricky to snap down. Just cycle your snap points and eventually you'll hit the snap point you want. They can be pretty damn frustrating. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up in a second so you don't have to watch me cycle through every snap point. I just like the way these fence supports look. I just think they look, I like the wood effect on them. They look really prim plus kind of style. They are pretty broken to be honest, you can't even snap them on top of a fence foundation, it has to be adjacent to a fence foundation, which is kind of weird. So we'll go ahead and snap them to each side and also we're going to snap them to the front here. And after that go ahead and snap a set of railings on the fence support. Be careful not to hit the edge of the ceiling. You want me to snap to the fence support, not the ceiling. Now I've done a quick edit here guys and I've added two more storm gates to the front. I was going to start this video again but I thought for the sake of two storm gates I'll just uh, quick, do a quick edit. Go ahead and add six uh, wooden ceilings to the side and uh, back there. Take your stone foundation and place four at the front and also four at the side. Take your stone ceiling and place one in this corner here. Then snap a stone staircase to it. Now you may need to come two down, three down or one down depending on the height of your water. So we don't want to be in the water, we want to be slightly above it. So for this I'm going to go one high and then I want to snap two stone staircases and four around the side like this. Now that bottom bit looks a bit ugly right so I'm going to wall this off and cover this over. So simply bring your walls up from the foundations to the ceiling all the way around. And then add the appropriate left or right slope wall in that triangular gap. Take your wooden fence foundations. When I say wooden, you can use any you want, but I think wooden is just a lot cheaper to use and it's a lot clearer to see. And then snap them every other ceiling along. And I'm going to add some pillars and railings here to add a bit of dynamic. You can add them every one if you like, but I'm going to add them every other one.
and then one next to the stairs like this. Big fish. Take your uh, stone rails, rail them along. Be careful not to hit the fence foundation, you want them on the edge of the ceiling. In fact, I need this part open because this is going to be our dock for our little canoe. So go ahead and add four stone ceilings to this front part here. And then add four rails, two left and two right and snap a wooden fence foundation to the left and the right. Take your wooden pillars and place one either side and take your stone pillars and bring these to the, to the floor. Next, take your stone rails and copy the set of copy the uh, pattern that I'm doing here. Take your stone ceilings. Place six on the left here, and your single stone door frame here. Next, take your single walls, and we're going to map out the ground floor section of our main build. We're also going to leave another gap there for another single stone door frame and then we're going to wall this all the way around. Next flip your stone walls and as I say on all my medieval builds uh, the reason I like to flip these is because I feel like the lumbar side of this gives it that medieval effect. It makes it look supported and rustic so that's why we'd be flipping these. Flip these all the way around. Next take your adobe walls, flip side out, place them around the third layer of this build. Take your stone walls, place two on the left here, two on the right, then also a, a, a layer of two flipped left and right. And then take your adobe flip side facing and place two on the left and two on the right. Let's go ahead and put a reinforced door in here and then one at the front here. Go ahead and take some adobe window frames. You can place these sort of anywhere you want really, but I'm gonna place two on the left here like this, and uh, two on the right here like this. It could be any way you want. Just adds a bit of dynamic to the build. And then we're gonna continue around with another row of flipped adobe. Let's go ahead and create our porch area. So. Uh, single stone door frame, single stone wall, two flipped stone walls and uh, two flipped adobe walls. Next take the appropriate left and right stone wall. Again we want the flip side facing. And then take your sloped wooden roofs and place two on the left and two on the right.
place two wooden seams at the front of this build. Take your flipped adobe, place one either side of these two ceilings. And then two wooden double door frames in the middle. And continue around with another set of adobe flip walls. Take your appropriate left and right slope wall, again, flip side facing out. Then two wooden flip walls, and again the appropriate left and right sloped wall. Let's repeat this pattern on the opposite side. and then place down your sloped wooden roofs. So soon guys, I'll be wrapping up this playlist. I have uh, three more builds or four, I think it's four, I'm not sure. And I'll be working on something new, but in between these four builds, I'll be bringing some Christmas stuff to you guys. Take your sloped wooden roofs, place two under these two ceilings here, and also place six under this left hand side. Place a wooden fence foundation in between both of these ceilings. and snap a wooden pillar free high to the top and also bring this pillar to the ground. I'm gonna to switch to the stone pillar towards the, towards the bottom of this. The hero, the hero of this build is the paint job and the train. I'm looking forward to showing you guys this crane part that I'm about to do. So place down another wooden fence foundation right here. And to that snap fence supports. One here and then one here. And bring these fence supports to the top of this, right to the top. So this is gonna create a support effect. Obviously it's not supporting anything but we want it to look like it is, you know, giving it that rustic feel. Let's give it sort of that under construction feel, you know what I mean? The idea of this is to look like a busy, busy dockyard. Take your ceiling, place one in the middle like that. And then take your catwalk, snap it to the ceiling. Bye. Let's go inside here and we're gonna add um, a row of four wooden ceilings. And also a row, uh, another row of four wooden ceilings. And a fireplace up here. And I love the way this chimney stack pokes out of the top. It makes it look like a bigger, thicker, wider chimney stack. Now you guys can leave access to this chimney if you want. But I'm on a boosted server right now, so I'm gonna fill mine with angler gel and I'm gonna block this off so no one can see it. 
If you wanted to leave a door there and a ladder, you could do that also. But really what I want from this is just the chimney effect. I don't really care about having one, you know. So I've got, I'm gonna go ahead and block this off by using four wooden ceilings and two sloped wooden walls. Out of sight, out of mind. Now this is my favorite part. Take your, you can use thatch for this by the way, you can use thatch for this, but I'm gonna use stone because I've got the resources. I'm gonna use wood, sorry. Place down two and a half foundations by sinking the first foundation into the other ones. And then bring up your walls, six, uh, seven high, or depending on how high you are. And then bring it out one wooden ceiling, one wooden trap door, and a wooden ceiling on this side. Then place a slope wooden wall exactly like this. So it looks like this. Like I say, you can use thatch for this. So we're going to destroy this in a second. This is part of my floating hatch frame glitch. I'll leave a link for that in the description below if you don't know how to do that. What you do is you place a trapdoor there. And I'm going to place an ammo crate on this because I want it to look like a busy, busy dockyard, like a crane. So I'm going to place, place it here. And using the hatch frame glitch, which can be done unofficial by the way, I'm going to break the connection with a giant hatch frame. So you're now left with the floating hatch frame and the ammo box on top. We can go ahead and delete all this stuff that we used. Like I said, you can use hatch for this, uh, thatch for this, sorry. And I'll link the uh, floating hatch frame glitch in the description below. But we have a floating ammo crate right now. So I'm going to go ahead and take a wooden fence foundation and place it like this. And then a, a vertical cable. And I'm going to try and eye up with the, uh, the bottom of that wooden fence foundation. and take my flexi cable and place it from that one to the bottom of this fence foundation part here. So the idea obviously is to make it look like it's been uh, picked up by this cable. And fill in any windows that you may have with your greenhouse windows. I'm going to place another ammo crate here because I want it to look like a busy working dock, like a fisherman's dock, lots of boxes, lots of lots of things going on, you know what I mean? Fish baskets, boxes, ammo crates, vessels, um, uh, taxidermies with fishing rods, stuff, uh, canoes, all stuff like that is good for things like this, you know, throw it anywhere you want, have fun with it. For me, the hero of this build will be the paint job and it will be the uh, train or well, pulley system. You could even slap an elevator track to that pulley system to make it look like it's actually been pulled. I'm going to go ahead and create a small 2x2 two two over here now just to give some dynamic to this build. So place down a single stone a doorway and then surround it with single stone. Again, let's do a, ray, a, a layer of flipped stone walls. And we'll take our Adobe window frame and flip it again. And place four in this pattern here. And we also place down four flipped Adobe walls. This is just to make it look less bare, you know, make it look like there's more going on than just one build. Again, take your appropriate slope left and right walls and place one either side on either, on all sides of this. And take your sloped wooden roofs and place them down in a crisscross pattern like this.
fill in any windows you may have with greenhouse windows. In fact, I'm going to change this to a doorway and give myself a second floor access point. As I said, as of next week, you'll be able to watch me do this live on Twitch. Give me suggestions. Uh, you know, we can talk uh, strategy. Should be a lot of fun. Take your single stone ceiling and create a, an access point to the second floor by snapping some staircases to it. And I want access to this rear dock view, so I'm going to snap two stone door frames so I can walk through there. Two stone ceilings, a stone ceiling here and a left sloped stone wall and then also one on this side cover all those nasty ass gaps no 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 stone reels There we go, something real small and real fast. Throw down two reinforced doors here. Um, <laughs> my brain's ticking thinking now. Go ahead and add a second floor to this place. Cute and cozy. Let's throw a fireplace in here so we get that chimney effect from the outside. Let me check it, make sure it's good. It's good. So for the paint scheme guys, uh, window frames all white, all regions white. I'll leave the, the paint scheme in the description below. Walls, one, four, five, and six white. And then two and three in black. Mud works really well for this too. I think in the next video I'm gonna be using mud. Instead of white and black, I'll be using white and mud. And the roof is gonna be all brick. The medieval builds also look good in all forest green. So I've skipped ahead and, and painted mine. And I'll take you through some of the things that I've added as well. Got some gas bag balloons here, making it look busy, busy. Uh, some motor flags, keeping that fisherman sort of feel to it. I put a little plan here and some a motor trophy, keeping that fishing uh, dock sort of effect. I've got my unicorn parked out here with his little trough. Some more gas bags. I tried to keep it fisherman sort of feel to it, you know, busy, busy dog, boxes, fishing stuff, all stuff like that, you know. So I hope you catch me on my next video for my windmill. But until next time, guys, that's me out. Laters.